Okay, so we'll just consolidate what I talked about. I've just started recording the video so that you've got these notes in the video later if you want to go back on them. So for independent events, so when the outcome of one event does not affect the other, that's the key bit. Then they are called independent events. Probability of two events occurring, both events, okay? Sorry, two independent events, I should say, of two independent events occurring can be calculated. by multiplying the probability of each event together. Now, this is why we have mathematical language, because mathematicians are inherently lazy people, and they're efficient. I should stop saying lazy, they're inherently efficient people, and it's often efficient to use notation instead of lots of words. But before I show you that notation, I just want to just check with you guys, does that make sense to you so far? Or you can ask me a question if you want to. Okay. I.e. the probability of A and B equals the probability of A multiplied by the probability of, of B if A and B are independent. If they're not independent, it doesn't work. Okay, and this is going to be good telly for the video. So going back to the, the, um, the cubes in a cup, I've got three red cubes and two blue cubes in a cup. I'm repeating it for the video. I've got three red cubes and two blue cubes in a cup, and I want to draw one out. If I said, what's the probability of drawing a red cube out? So, A equals draw red cube. The probability of A is equal to three in five. Yeah, this is what we just talked about before. If the probability of B is draw a blue cube, then the probability of B is equal to two in five. So if I want to know what the probability of A and B is, I would say that's three in five multiplied by two in five, and this would be, I've drawn a red uh, cube, then I've drawn a blue cube, which is equal to six in 25. So there's a six in 25 chance, or 24% chance, of drawing a red cube and then a blue cube. If I replace the cube after the first draw. That makes it independent. Okay? So if I draw a red cube out and then replace it 
and then draw another cube out and it's blue, the chance of me doing that was a 24% chance. So almost one in five, uh, one in four, almost a quarter. Does that make sense? But if I don't replace it, then they're not independent. I'll see if I can squish that down the bottom there. Sorry, it's a bit scratchy down there. So if I don't replace it, they're not independent. Is that making sense so far? Awesome. So getting back to the original thing, which I did before the video, which was uh, having a bit of a chat about how we would describe that. Remember I said, I pull a cube out. Now what's the chances of me getting red now? We said it was two in four because I just pulled a red cube out. So the, newer, the first event was actually pulling a cube out of four. The second event was pulling a cube, sorry, say that again. The first event was pulling a cube out of five. The second event was pulling a cube out of four. So we actually changed the parameters of the event and that's what made them independent. Because instead of going um, three fifths times two fifths, we were going three fifths times two quarters. So we, so we forced it to be independent, um, if you like. Okay, any questions? Yeah. So if the up there it's like three out of five and two out of five. Yep. If it's three out of five and two out of four, four. Would, that, would that still be okay? It would be absolutely okay because you've modified B, which is draw a blue cube, to, to denote that this is in the second stage now. Okay? So these are these both of the original events from slide three there. The three fifths and two fifths are based on a full cup of cubes. Okay? But if I withdrew a cube and kept it, each, let's say it's a red, it doesn't matter what colour it is really. If I withdrew a cube, then the probability would then be affected. So we would have to change the top and bottom number. So an example of that, this is makes poor video, but anyway, for an example, if I if I shook it up and then pulled out a blue cube, then there was a two, there was a then I would only have one blue cube left, so my top number would change because there's only one chance now of getting blue again. And my bottom number would change because there's only four cubes left. So it's an entirely separate event, which is why they're independent, right? Yeah. Now, another word on, I might leave that notation, there's another notation thing I wanted to go through, but I might leave that as well. Okay. Let's move on to something else. And it's called Weighted Tree. So I'll start with the title there, but I might not get you to write notes just yet. And we'll consider a scenario. So in your... In your workbook, let's take this red cube, blue cube in a cut thing and let's take it to um, the next level. Well, I'll start with an easy one first, but don't, don't write these notes down yet. A w tree um, diagrams uh, can be used to describe a sample space. Now, I only had about half hands up before when I, was ex when I asked who knew, knew about tree diagrams, and where I want us to be at is this thing called weighted tree diagrams. That's where I'm headed. But just to start with, I just want to make sure everyone's okay with that. If I asked you like to list all the combinations from flipping a coin twice, then you could do it like this, couldn't you? You could go uh, heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, and that'd be fine. This is just listing them. If I said, what about for three coins, then you could go, well, it'd be a head, then 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 a tail, then a head, then a tail, then a head, then a tail, then a head, and a head, and then you'd have a tail and a tail and a head and a tail and a head and a tail and anything else? Tail, tail, a head, tail, tail, and then a tail, tail. tail. Yeah, I think that's it. Eight, eight ways. Oh, tail, 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 thank you. Yeah. So you could list them, 
but even with three points, I mean, I had to be pretty systematic with my thinking to make sure I listed all of those combinations down, but it's absolutely doable. So another way of organising your data in a way which means that you don't accidentally miss one is to use something like a tree diagram. So I'll do it for three, and this is, again, not for you to take notes down, just so you get a sense. You can stage your event. So the event is flipping a coin three times. Are they independent events? Yeah. yeah. Once you flip the coin, it's ready to be flipped again. The second, the second part doesn't uh, affect the first part. But we can also talk about stages. So there's, if I flip a, a coin three times in a row, there are three stages. I flip it once, I flip it twice, I flip it a third time. So our tree diagram describes those stages. So I start off with a node like this, and I say there are two possible outcomes. I can either get a head or a tail. So these are called branches, and these are called nodes. Once I've got a head, what can I uh, get next? A head or a tail. But if I flip a tail, what can I get? A head or a tail. Once I flip my second head, what can I get? A head or a tail, a head or a tail, a head or a tail, a head or a tail. Now the good thing about this is that if I now read across the branches, I will end up with all possible outcomes. It's a systematic way of working out those outcomes without worrying that you're missing something. Is that okay so far? Yep. Okay, so what I want you to do is, uh, oh, no, sorry, go. Um, Name. Akira. Akira, thanks Akira. If you knew the amount of different possibilities, yes. why would the one about six be more easy to do, more efficient? Do yes and no. Um, so if I go, if, if you know how many there are, the question will be, how do you know that? Yeah, so if I add an extra head or extra, uh, an extra flip, that'd be two for the power of four, 16. So that's good. Um, and then you've got a, it, it's good to have a number to aim for, but honestly, um, I mean, these are fairly simple events. You'll, you'll, what you'll end up doing is you'll get 15 of them, or something like that, and then you'll go, I oh, know there's supposed to be 16, oh man. And then you spend all your time like hunting for a needle in a haystack, trying to figure out what was the one combination you missed out on. So um, that's it's a really good question. And the, the truth is though, is that honestly, often you don't need to write down every single combination. And that's the stuff I was talking to you about last lesson, that sometimes having a calculation like, well, I'm flipping two coins, so it's two to the power of n, where n is the number of coins I flipped. That kind of thing is really good to know because that's all we're really interested in. Yeah, love that question, that's a good one. Okay, so my point being that trees do allow us to do the same sort of thing. It's a different systematic way of doing it. What I want you to do now, and I might not even give you enough time to do it, let's just see how we go. I want you to draw a tree diagram in your workbook, please, to represent this. The, oh, for the video, the three red cubes and the two blue cubes in a cup. Are we replacing it every time? Yeah, let's do that. Let's replace it every time. It makes it simpler. I'll pause the video and then I'll unpause it once we're done. You got this? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you'll need to correct your thinking. Why can't you do that? Too much space. space. Oh, you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, the chance of pulling a red <laughs> balloon is a different. Isn't one half. Yeah, that's, what I mean. that's right. Okay, so we need to be able to. So if if that was your tree, you your tree fails to take into account that the chances of getting red are slightly more than the chances of getting blue. So this one is just plain wrong. <laughs> This one is right, but it has difficulties, which everyone has experienced, I think. Because we're replacing, I can't even be bothered. So because we're replacing, we need at least a two paper size to get a, a decent looking diagram. Okay? Um, I saw Henry or Otto doing something which made it a little bit more neater, which I really appreciated seeing. They put nodes at the top. Who was it? One of you two did that? Put the nodes at the top, and then you're sort of going top, going down ways. And that was a nice, neat way of doing it. But still, you know, I think you're going to run into the third level. It's still looking pretty ordinary. So what we note here is that effectively, a lot of the work, a lot of the work we do is repetitive here because each of the red each of the red balls here is or red cubes I should say really is the same outcome which is that I've drawn a red one. Okay? So what we do instead is we adjust our tree diagram in such a way that it reflects the different weightings for red and blue and hence it's called a weighted tree. Okay, so you don't need it if it's even like um, like a heads and tails because that's 50-50 or if it was like a six-sided die or something like that, but otherwise you can use what's called a weighted tree. Yeah, so weighted tree. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure it's as little writing as possible. So a laser tree diagram is a tree diagram, we've all seen that now, with the probabilities written on the branches, and this is how we show the weighting. Okay? Um, instead of listing every single event, like red, 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 blue, blue, we only list the unique events. Now the unique events are R and B, red and blue, right? But we just need to recognise that they're weighted differently. So let's just quickly put the context up. I know you've seen it, so I'll write that as quickly as I can. Oops, start that again. Okay, so drawing a cube from a cup containing three red and two blue cubes, the cube is drawn three times and replaced. 
each time. Okay, so in terms of uniqueness, the uniqueness is red or blue. Yep. Good so far. To demonstrate, not to demonstrate, to um, illustrate the weighting on the branch, we put the probabilities. So what's the chance of getting red? Three and five. Now you could write that as a decimal 0.6 or 60% as well. The chance of getting blue is two and five. I frequently find, however, that fractions are probably the most convenient way to write them because it's just like how many ways? Three out of how many cubes? Five, three over five. It's easier, I think. Then, after I've drawn once, I draw again. I could get uniquely red or blue. Three and five, two and five. Or from blue, I could get red or blue. Three and five, two and five. Thirdly, I could get red or blue again. For each of my branches again. Three and five, two and five. Notice I'm putting them on the outside of the branches here. I might just zoom up so you can sort of see what I'm doing. I'm being a bit scratchy here, sorry. But you can see that for a three-stage event, I've been able to pretty much get it written down fairly neatly. And I have reflected the fact that it has certain weightings. What do you think? Can you use tangential in this calculator? Good question. I probably wouldn't yeah. write it into a list because what am I almost always wanting to find really? Just the number of possible outcomes. Either the number of possible outcomes or the, the probability itself. Yeah. Now do you remember what I said before about independent events? If I've got two or more events that are independent, multiply. you multiply the probabilities together. Which means that if I follow a tree branch along and multiply the, the, the other values on the branches, I'll get my probability. So it would be 3 over 5 times 3 over 5 times 2 over 5. That would be for red, red, blue? Yeah. Yeah. Red, red, blue would be 3 out of 5 times 3 out of 5 times 2 out of 5. And then you just keep going along. Yep. Why do you want to just got two red and one blue over all? Look, excellent question. Okay, so there's um, Violet and Otto ask two separate questions which sound the same but they're not. It's worth just exploring it slightly because I wanted to anyway. So Violet said, so if it was red, red, blue, I'd go three fifths, three fifths, two fifths and multiply them together. Yes, absolutely. So that would get you the probability of red, red, blue. And Otto asked, but what if it was two reds and a blue? As a... Okay, you've got a choice right now, you two. Focus to the front by having your backs to the back of the classroom, or you can take a, um, a hike outside the door now. Your choice. Okay, good choice. If it was just two reds and a blue, in other words, the order didn't matter, but as long as there were two reds and a blue in the mix, then I would do red, red, blue here, but also red, blue, red would also work. Also, so would blue, red, red. All of those would be legit. So what I would do is I would work out the probability of that branch and work out the probability of that branch and work out the probability of that branch and then guess what I do? I add them together because I'm collecting those probabilities together, okay? So I would add those probabilities together. So when I'm going across ways, I'm multiplying my probabilities. When I'm then going down ways like this, collecting them together, I will add. And means times, or means plus. Because when Otto said, what does it mean, um, what, what if you just want to find out two reds and a blue, if we broke that down, we would mean red, red, blue, or red, blue, red, or blue, red, red. See the ors there, if you explicitly state what you're actually looking for? So the ors trigger a plus, 
the ands trigger a multiplication. Yeah, I'll just finish off these notes about weighted trees. Yeah, gosh, try that again. To work out I'll just leave it at that example for the time being, but just want to check for understanding that I might just zoom out so you can sort of see all four bits of information there. So the best way I can talk about it is that, is that the event is broken down into three mini events. Okay? So um, the mini event is drawing a cube from the cup, but the whole event is drawing three cubes. Because that's confusing, we tend to call it stages instead. So each of the mini events is a stage. So stage one is to draw out a cube, stage two, and then return it. Stage two is to draw out a cube, then return it. Stage three is to draw out a cube, then return it. Okay. So. What I might do now is I might just stop this video and get some work happening. So give me a ticket to do that.